Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of RTHD. In this episode, this is actually uh, a little bit different from, of course, unboxing and tech and so forth. Um, I'm actually running uh, Scent OS 7. It's actually a, uh, a Red Hat sort of unbranded version of Red Hat. It's a open source version of pretty much what Red Hat does. Um, so it is a popular Linux um, distribution that a lot of people use. And um, what I'm trying to do, of course, here is uh, to run CentOS 7, particularly on uh, Oracle VM VirtualBox Manager. Now, VM VirtualBox Manager as well is also free. <clears throat> I believe it's also open source, so you can check that out as well too. And basically, it's a virtualization software for Windows, so it allows you to run Linux within Windows and some other operating systems as well. Of course, you need to download and install it and so forth. But anyways, the point is this, the solution to an issue. The first issue that I had was, of course, uh, when we set up, when I set it up, when I set up CentOS, um, this was actually a file that I got from on the internet, so it was already installed. I just had to pull it into Oracle VirtualBox, and I noticed that for some reason, as you can see, let's let's boot it up, and I'll show you the error that I have been getting, and I want to show you guys how, of course, to fix it. So just stay tuned. It's going to take a little bit of uh, some time to, of course, boot up. This is actually pulling from a network drive, um, actually over Wi-Fi. Uh, that was with the recent upgrade that I had um, with the Wi-Fi AC standard. But um, as I said, it takes a little while. It's booting up here. Hopefully, you can see that. And we should get an error. And this is the strange error that I received. And I thought this was kind of strange because I know that this laptop actually has virtualization capabilities. Um, it's something that you could also check uh, on your BIOS if you have your BIOS. And your BIOS should be, especially if you have a newish computer, maybe 2015 and up, maybe even lower than that, you may have the option to enable virtualization. You have to make sure that that is enabled a lot of the times in order to you do this. Now, as you can see, we got this error here. It says this kernel requires an X8664 CPU, but it only detected an I8, uh, I686 CPU. The processor is unsupported in CentOS 7. If you see, that means that I can't actually boot CentOS. So that was kind of strange because, I mean, this is a piece of virtualization software and it should. The whole point and intent of it is to be able to boot, of course, operating systems within Windows. Well, I have to say that I actually found a funny, actually, it's actually my fault that this is happening and probably you may be experiencing this as well too and that's why I hope that you are tuned into this video. Um, but let's check and see <coughs> how to fix this. So first thing you want to do is of course shut down. So you're going to you're gonna shut down the instance, the virtualization instance of course. Uh, it takes a few seconds, hopefully it will. It's actually a little bit slower today. Alright, so we power off the machine and now what you need to do is to go to settings so right click on the instance, go to settings, and then you will see I have version here Red Hat and you see 32 bit. Well, change that to Red Hat 64 bits. Now you could do that with any, uh, I believe you could do that with even the other one, which is other Linux 64 bit, bit as well. You could also do that there, but um, Red Hat 64 bit pretty much solves the problem. So let's just make sure that that is happening as again, it boot is a little bit low because I only set one processor to actually run this instance out of the four processors that is on this actual laptop but um, the point is it's hopefully gonna boot up takes a little while I guess it's pulling something over the network as we said before right good so it's gonna that's the kind of the boot screen and we got back here let's see if it's gonna boot and take some time oops I mean all this is actually pulling data from uh, over the network as well too so it's not going to be fastest but it's a lot more convenient than having to store it ah yeah good so you see we actually see the sent to a 7 background and we see it's spinning now I'm not going to go through the full boot because it's it takes pretty long to go through the full boot, um, as I said, because of the settings that I have. Um, but the whole point is that it will actually work once you do that. So I hope that this helps someone out there who does some of the development and so forth on their computers and so forth. This is uh, definitely uh, an issue that I had previously and I didn't find a solution until the second time, which 
I hope that this makes it easy for someone out there um, who's having the same issue. With that being said, guys, thank you so much for viewing. If you have any questions, if you have any things that you want me to test out, please let me know. I would love to do that as long as I have the time to do it. And uh, with that being said, I'll see you guys again soon. Please like and subscribe as well on the way out. And uh, stay tuned for another episode of RTHD coming to YouTube screen. Near you. Bye. Thank you.